1940s field was the very great one. But it was a remarkable pioneering spirit, and many people will claim that their field started it, but the 40s field started the North Sea in earnest. If we hadn't taken advantage of the North Sea opportunity, we should have been shot. It was a project of a scale that, you know, I don't think Scotland's ever seen before. Um, not just size, but, but the sheer groundbreaking technology involved. Frankly, it was science fiction type engineering developments. It's an incredible story. BP was able to do tremendous things when they developed the field in, in the 70s, somewhat similar to putting a man on the moon because they were going into uncharted territory. The development of this type had, had never existed in the North Sea. This was seen in many ways as being quite a big game changer. Um, after the time when we had been on the back foot, we'd been on the receiving end of the price increases uh, pushed through by Saudi Arabia and the others, uh, and suddenly here we were going to have a chance to be in the driving seat, and it was indeed the start of a, a golden age. Ignition sequence start. The 40s field was born out of an era of space as well as subsea exploration. It was a time of pioneers, pushing the boundaries of technology and design to conquer new territories in search of new fortunes. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are confirmed to go for orbit. The Black Gold Rush in the North Sea was heralded in by the granting of government leases BP was allocated one of the first licenses. Early oil and gas exploration was a dangerous business. In 1965, 13 men had lost their lives on the sea gem. Its replacement, the Sea Quest, was drilling in the 40s area in late summer 1970, when there came a breakthrough. Went on at seven o'clock in the evening, and we knew we did a few lens of sand, we dropped through them drilling, because you just boom, you drop through, you know, and it just took off like a scaldy cat. We were drilling about 100 foot an hour, you know. And prior to that, we'd been drilling about six foot an hour. And we'd got shows of oil on top of the pits, on the shakers, and we thought, gearbox is leaking again, because it leaked a few days before, so dip the gearbox, plenty of oil in there, get the geologist out of bed, and we got the petroleum engineers and the geologists to look at it, and they decided to run an RFT, which is a repeat formation tester. When we got the RFT back to the surface, they realised then it was a significant oil find and, and there was telexes flying everywhere and it was all in code and everything was kept under wraps. It was groundbreaking. To find it in your own backyard was absolutely amazing. And everybody was really, really excited. When we was emptying the RFT, I run down the mess room and I got a Coleman's horseradish sauce bottle and I took the sample out, the first 10 gallons of ever come out of the 40s discovery and we was kept on board for an extra three days because of the secrecy, nobody was allowed to go ashore. Apparently word never did get out as far as I understand until BP released how big the field was. With the announcement of the first results of BP's exploratory tests in the 40s field it now seems obvious that the North Sea is going to become one of the world's major oil fields. BP's discovery sent a shockwave through the oil industry, and it began the transformation of Aberdeen into a boom town. American oilmen flooded in. The real secrecy um, it was really quite intriguing when this mini shell and BP were, were clearly doing a lot of exploration drilling. We had to be very careful as a contractor, even with the limited access we had, um, to ensure that we were um, very discreet in terms of what we said about the, the, the work we were doing. From 1971, four appraisal wells were drilled in the field. With the significance of the discovery confirmed, construction of four massive platforms began. I think the first most important thing about 40s was the risk that was being taken by BP at the time because uh, it was a first. And there was no guarantee that these platforms, these jackets, uh, which were, had all these flotation devices around them, could be landed safely in the right place 
would actually stand there and the deck could be put on and we could do all the things we wanted to do safely and properly. So it's a big risk because it had never been done. The oil had to find its way not just from thousands of feet beneath the seabed, but it had to be piped 105 miles to shore and then a further 129 miles to the refinery at Grangemouth. In 1975, Prime Minister Harold Wilson accompanied the Queen who formally opened the 40s field. I absolutely can't remember footage of the Queen pressing the button on the 40s field. It was a very important moment, very important indeed. The four new 40s oil platforms became the UK's most remote workplace. When we went offshore as part of the ops team, pretty new to everyone, but very daunting. No safety harnesses were being worn and people were smoking in the helicopter. It was about a one hour journey out to the 40s field and you arrive on this massive structure. You know, first time I'd ever been offshore in my life, massive structure, totally on your own. It felt like a million miles away from home. When you went on the platform, the accommodation, every room would be a six-man cabin, the light would be on all the time. There was no telephone signal. You had to actually use a ship to shore telephone. A two-week trip was a long, long time when you could know, speak to your family once per week. In 1976, the 40s received the Queen's Award for Industry and wages for offshore workers were reaching new levels. When I went to work on the rigs, I was getting a tome, I was getting about one pound ten shillings a week. And I went to work on the rigs and it was in the days, it was ten days on and five days off when you first went. So on ten days work, I earned 53 pounds. By 1979, the 40s field was at a peak production of 500,000 barrels of oil a day. If it was foggy and the choppers couldn't fly, you got transferred from a work boat by crane straight onto the rig. And all this was was like a pyramid basket you hung onto it was gr for grim death. And if the boat's going up and down like that and the rig's going up and down like that, you had to make a dive for it. When I was the manager of the Forties Field, which I adored being, and we're just coming off the plateau, uh, which was 500,000 barrels a day, it was still a gigantic field. I tried almost every other weekend to go offshore uh, to the platforms and speak to people, find out what was going on, and flying out was, was marvellous. Uh, sometimes it was really fearsome. I remember having to be uh, lassoed with a rope, having landed because it, the wind would gust and could blow you off the heli deck. Uh, and the four platforms had managers, uh, and the managers obviously were on shift, and there were about a dozen of them. They called themselves the College of Cardinals, and of course, naturally, therefore, I was the Pope. By the mid-1980s, production from the field was approaching one and a half billion barrels of oil. The Iolair barge was stationed in the field, working as a safety support vessel and providing extra accommodation. By now, hundreds of men were working offshore and thousands employed onshore as part of the supply chain. Right across the UK, with subcontracting, small fabrications and engineering and pumps, what have you, it's had a huge impact on the UK uh, industry. And apart from that, whatever you might think of, of um, Mrs Thatcher, I mean, there's no doubt that the oil revenue coming in in the 80s has actually helped remodel and reshape the UK economy significantly. Politicians, celebrities and royalty all flocked to the platforms, keen to be seen to be part of the 40s success story. The Princess of Wales visited a North Sea oil rig appropriately named 40s Charlie platform. She'd asked to go there herself and spent three hours learning about the oil business. Nineteen eighty six saw a fifth platform. Forties Echo was installed and commissioned. And by nineteen ninety, the original forties export pipeline to shore had corroded and had to be replaced by a much larger pipeline to service other parts of the North Sea. The 
the 40s pipeline system became a very important part of the infrastructure of the North Sea. And that meant that we had to build yet another platform uh, to take care of that. In 1993, the unmanned Unity riser platform was installed to the west of the field. Safety and security are key to managing the offshore assets. There was always a concern about some terrorist attack offshore or even bombs offshore. And there was planned events that would actually happen. And one particular one was when the SBS, at the time, Special Boat Services, they came. So there was rumours on the platform that there was going to be an exercise. And this was to see if a terrorist attack could physically happen. So there had been a boat outside of the Fortis field. These guys had to maybe swim a mile to the platform, climb up onto the chocks on the legs, and, and these Marines could not get on. The waves were washing them off. But once they were on the platform and established their, their, their whereabouts in the lower level, and there was helicopters come on underneath the helideck level, at sea level, and came right to the platform, and they sailed onto the helideck. They stormed the, the OIM's office, took the OIM into one side, and then, then we hit the muster button. They were looking for this one person who was meant to be a terrorist in the platform. Quite daunting, quite frightening, quite illuminating to the guys. They all then left by helicopter one and a half hours later. Once the OIM had identified the individual they were looking for. At the turn of the century, the 40s field had delivered over two billion barrels of oil. So the North Sea looked like it was beginning to go into its very late phase of uh, life. Uh, and so we concluded better to sail uh, early rather than late. And the sale of 40s was uh, one of many decisions to reorient uh, the strategy of BP, uh, to diversify it away from the North Sea. In 2003, BP sold the 40s field to the Houston-based Apache Corporation for 630 million US dollars. It's always a tough decision. You can never sell anything to somebody where there's no magic left. Otherwise, they don't buy it. Why would you buy something with no magic? So we sold it with magic, and I think Apache did a fantastic job uh, at doing things that BP would not have done. We came into the office not knowing what to expect, to be told then that the faultless field had been sold, everyone was totally shocked, especially as no one actually had visited the offshore platforms. We were getting old ladies by this time, five old ladies that needed TLC, so I think it was a leap of faith. That leap of faith was made by one man, the maverick Raymond Plank, founder and chairman of Apache Corporation. At the time, the world's biggest independent oil and gas exploration and production company. Why did Raymond see the North Sea as, as an opportunity? Well, 12 years ago, the North Sea was already falling out of favor with the industry in general and the financial community, and that fit his model as a perfect time to make an entry. It was at a stage in its life cycle where Apache could come in and, and make a difference. Raymond, first of all, was a visionary in every single way. He also was contrarian. When other people were selling, he was buying. When other people were buying, he was selling. The 40s acquisition is probably the best transaction that we've done in the history of the company. Did we have a roadmap for 40s? No. Did we fully understand the challenges that, that lay ahead for 40s? No. Many of the initial first steps were based on the good ideas resident with the people who came to Apache from BP. They had clearly been studying the field, they knew the challenges, they were able to table them quickly, and I think they were somewhat surprised how fast Apache took those ideas and put them into motion. The Apache Corporation began spending on refurbishing and upgrading the platforms on an unprecedented scale. Straight away, it shot new seismic surveys of the field. The biggest technical breakthrough uh, that has impacted 40s is the perfection of 4D seismic, uh, which has allowed us to 
visualize and see uh, remaining oil as it moves around the reservoir. The good news is we didn't know what we were getting into in terms of infrastructure, but we did have the uh, foresight to understand what the reservoir might be able to yield. And the good news was that turned out to be even better than we could have imagined. Just a year after the acquisition, 12 new wells were drilled. Back in 2003, that this was seen to be a field which was in decline. It was producing 40,000 barrels a day. But yet a year later, because of the money which Apache had invested, it was up to 60,000, a 50% increase in the amount of oil which was being extracted every day. And that, that showed that by bringing new technology, a new enthusiasm, a new approach, and being a, a company which specialized in looking for where those additional resources might be, it created a very strong uh, opportunity for the United Kingdom. Apache set ambitious targets to reduce costs, increase production, and make the field more efficient. Plans started formulating and developing, and we identified what were the critical issues that needed to be addressed up front, and it was around how power was generated and distributed in the field, export pumping, and took on the major projects, and then we went on to the others around gas compression, control systems, power generation, completely renovating how the field operates instead of each platform being an independent island of its, on its own and either deficient or su sufficient in fuel gas, building the gas ring main, uh, creating two centers for power generation and linking the field together is, is one of the, the strengths that the field has and enables the field, the field to operate in a very efficient manner. And that's why 40's operating cost is basically half that of, of the typical North Sea operator. People talk about the Fortis field being the miracle Fortis field. Well, there's no miracle about this. This is all about a tremendous business plan fabulously well executed. They revolutionized things. They brought a whole new approach to the development of mature assets. So they've invested over three billion pounds in that field since they took it over in 2003. And the results are there to be seen. They have over doubled the recoverable reserves. They've increased the production rate by about 50%. And they've extended the life of that field by what, 18 years or more. It's a tremendous success story. Forties has expanded beyond its original boundaries, with new opportunities for investment. Recent discovery, Bacchus, has been tied back to the original Forties Alpha platform. Forties fit the, the old adage, there's no better place to find new oil than in an old oil field. It's also enabled us to bring in additional fields that are satellites to 40s, like Mall, like Tonto, and a few others that we have on the map to go test in years to come. And there's more to find. Apache's boldest investment in the field has been the commissioning of the 40s Alpha satellite platform. It was built in Newcastle and towed out and installed in 2014. And after nine years at the helm, Jim House is returning to Houston, with Corey Logering taking over in late summer 2015. I'm actually very excited about taking over the 40s field. There are a lot of very good projects and a lot of very good opportunities in the, in the 40s area. I think going forward, though, one of the challenges for Apache is, and one of the challenges for this region is going to be access to capital. I'd like to certainly... Uh, look at how we can accomplish as much as possible and make that capital as efficient as possible to be able to touch as many projects as we can to test some of the ideas that this 40s team has identified and has in the, uh, in the prospect inventory right now. The 40s field represents probably the greatest success that Apache's ever had. continues to deliver well after we expected it not to. And in fact, we've got a couple of more decades to look forward to. The thing that really sets Apache apart, we've made the investments in the infrastructure. And now you look at our track record, I mean, the industries 
operating in an average 60 to 65 percent efficiency, we're up over 90 percent. And it's because of the investments we've made. And now you've got 40s as one of the, the most outstanding fields in the North Sea again.